Well, a warm welcome to this talk. Now, I just want to bring you some really quite interesting survey data from the United States from last week. And it really looks like opinions in relation to trust in the pharmaceutical industry and industry in the United States is reducing and scepticism about the safety of the COVID vaccine is also increasing. Now, this only tells us about the United States. I suspect in the United Kingdom, the thinking might be different, but this is the United States data. Now, let me give you the headline and then we'll look at all the, the details and the references, of course, as we always do. Now, this is the headline here. 33% agree COVID-19 vaccine is killing large numbers of people. Now, this is a uh, quite a huge amount. Now this 33% is all American adults over the age of 18. So basically all the adults in the United States. Now of course this is telling us nothing about how safe or dangerous COVID vaccines are or how trustworthy or untrustworthy uh, Big Pharma is but it's telling us about people's attitudes and there's a real shift here. And uh, let me give you some of the information from the survey. I'll give you the links. It's very intelligible and very comprehensive. Now, this is the um, first question here. How much do you now have, how much trust do you now have for the medical and pharmaceutical industries? And this is uh, all American adults that are being representative here. So 17% have a lot of trust. I suspect that might have been higher a few years ago. 17% now, only 17% only 17, 17 have a lot of trust. Quite surprised it's that many, actually. Uh, some trust, 37%. Uh, not much trust at all, 25%. And no trust, 18%. So I think we're seeing a big reduction in trust for the medical and pharmaceutical industries. So people there who have not much trust or uh, no trust at all, 43% of adults in the United States. And these sort of large percentages of millions of adults is, is, is getting to the point where things could start to change, potentially. Not quite sure it's there yet because there's a lot of vested interest, but it's getting towards that direction. 43%. Now, what I did then was I actually looked, checked on the uh, United States Census Bureau and we see that 262 million adults uh, in the uh, United States. So that means that 112 million, nearly 113 million adults have not much or no trust in the pharmaceutical medical industry. That's a 112 million, 695,704 individuals uh, have not much or no trust in the medical and pharmaceutical industries. And you would think that even if industry is not moved by love of humanity, um, these numbers of people will start to have a bit of a financial impact, you would have thought. And uh, sometimes when the money changes, you know what, the spirit can move. Let's wait and see. Going on, um, here we have, um, do you agree or disagree with this statement about COVID-19 vaccines? Uh, the vaccine is killing people and is killing large numbers of people. 16% agree, 17% somewhat agree, 18% somewhat disagree, 39% strongly disagree. But of course, a lot of people have taken a lot of vaccines. So if it were that these vaccines were causing a lot of side effects, maybe a lot of people are in denial and wouldn't want to admit that. I think we have to bear that in mind as a possibility. So the vaccine is killing people and killing people in large numbers, killing large numbers of people. So if you take together the agree and strongly agree, that gives us 33% and that transposes to 86 million, 86 million Americans. And as we've said, of course, this tells us nothing about how safe or dangerous they are. It just tells us about public opinion, which is clearly changing. 
Now, this data is from uh, Rasmussen Reports. It was conducted on the 13th and the 16th and 17th of June 2024, so pretty up-to-date stuff. There's the link. Do check it out for yourself. And what they say, if it's in the news, uh, it's in our polls, public opinion polling since 2003. Now, they do a lot of political polling, and that's quite important, actually, because political polling is now a fine art. Pollsters know exactly where to take people from to give a representative sample of the population as a whole. So in my country, there's going to be a landslide victory for the Labour government in a couple of weeks' time, because all the polls say so, and uh, they probably won't be wrong. Uh, I'll leave you to add, uh, fortunately, unfortunately, brilliantly, tragically, whatever you want after that. We're not going to comment on that, but they are pretty accurate, these polls. That's the point I'm making. Uh, now, the adults involved were 1,223. It doesn't sound a lot, but as we've said, they are very good at taking these representative samples. So this is probably fairly accurate information. Now, this is a survey here. No, no vaccines taken, 25% of American adults. One vaccine, 14% of American adults. One or more vaccine, 20% of American adults. Two vaccines and boosters, 38% of American adults. And this bears pretty close correlation with, with what is known to be the number of vaccines that went out in the United States. So confirmation that this is largely, uh, appears to be uh, correct uh, data that's been generated. Now, do you reject, reject taking the COVID vaccine? What they've done here is quite clever. They've broken it down by how many vaccines people have taken. Now, they've broken it down in many, many ways. I can't go into them all, but they've broken it down by sex, obviously, uh, age groups. It's all broken down into age groups, uh, ethnicity, uh, educational levels, uh, political uh, orientations, um, income bans, education bans, all of those things. It's correlated with all of those. But we haven't got time to look at all of those. Uh, it is all there. It's all quite intelligible and quite interesting stuff. But do you regret taking COVID vaccines? Um, if you've taken one vaccine, 35% regret. One or more vaccine, 43%. Two vaccines plus the booster, 22% regret. Um, that is a lot of regret. I regret taking them because what I know now and what I knew then are so dramatically different. We were not given, I feel I was not given the correct information to give my informed consent. Now I would be much more informed. I would not touch them with a barge pole, knowing what I know now for my particular risk. So, um, a change in trust in me and a change in trust in millions of people in the United States. Those that had some trust, uh, some trust, no vaccines taken, 15%, one vaccine, 12%, one or more vaccine, 19%, two or more vaccines plus booster, 53% had some trust. Uh, those with not much trust, again, you can see it varies. So people who have not much trust, uh, one vaccine, it was... 30, uh, sorry, no vaccines, it was 30% with not much trust. One vaccine, 19% with not much trust. Two or more vaccines, 27% with not much trust. And two vaccines plus booster, 22% with not much trust. Then there's the figures for no trust at all. No vaccines taken, 53%. It looks like that there, those people there didn't have trust to begin with and still didn't have trust, but many more people appear to have been added to their number who are now lacking trust. And I'm certainly in that number where my trust has greatly diminished, as I know many of you are, as we have more information to analyse. Do you agree or disagree with this statement about COVID-19 vaccines? The vaccine is killing people and is killing people in large numbers. Those that strongly agree... So uh, no vaccine taken, 58% strongly agree. One vaccine taken, 14% strongly agree. One or more vaccines taken, 16% strongly agree. And uh, two vaccines and booster, 11% strongly agree. Somewhat agree, it's 40%, 20%, 26%, 11%. .11%. Those that somewhat agree, it's uh, no vaccine taken, 24. One vaccine, 19. 
uh, more than one vaccine, 33 and two vaccines and a booster, 22% somewhat uh, agree. And of course, in case we've forgotten what we're talking about, that is the vaccine is killing large numbers of people, according to these people's opinions. And of course, this tells us nothing about how many people are uh, being killed or not being killed. It just tells us about people's opinions. And moving down, uh, strongly disagree with the statement that vaccines are killing people. Uh, no vaccine taken, 5%. One vaccine taken, uh, 8%. One or more vaccine, 14. Two vaccines and boosters, 72%. And again, 72% there, pretty high. But of course, if you've taken all those vaccines, it's quite hard to agree that they're killing people because, of course, that puts you kind of in a bit of danger, really. So there could be some denial there as well. So as we've said, it tells us nothing about what is actually happening on the ground. It does tell us about a major shift in people's opinions. And if people are interrogating data for themselves and coming to their own conclusions, I think that's a good thing. Let me know what you think. This is about opinions. Uh, many other videos we do are about harder data, but this is purely about opinions. But hard data about opinions and those opinions do appear to be shifting really quite dramatically, hopefully shifting enough to bring about positive change in the United States and other countries. But for now, thank you for watching.